It's November and that means we are about to head into cold and flu season. Of course, add in a global pandemic and we could be in for a rough ride these next few months. So today I am spending the day in my kitchen whipping up a few herbal remedies to help keep us healthy this winter and I thought that you might like to come along and see what sort of things we use to keep ourselves healthy the all natural way. So I do have another video where I actually show you what sort of things we keep in our natural medicine cabinet and sort of walk you through each one or each item. So I will link that below if you want to check that out. But in general, we lean on a lot of herbs and essential oils to boost our immunity and help keep us healthy, kind of the all natural way all year long, but especially during cold and flu season. So my first line of defense really is our essential oil or my essential oils collection. Um, so I like to use essential oils that are antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial, that sort of thing in our diffuser as our kind of first line of defense against germs and sickness. So the germ fighter blend from plant therapy is my personal favorite to use this time of year. There are a whole bunch of good ones and if you'd like to grab a bottle for yourself or any other essential oils or accessories, um, I will actually link to the plant therapy website below and if you use code HOME15, you can get 15% off your entire order um, until the end of November 2020. So I will link to all that below. Um, but aside from our essential oils, we also use a lot of herbs and I make a lot of um, herbal home remedies that we can take orally to, again, help boost immunity and keep us healthy and well all cold and flu season. So today I'm gonna to be showing you three different homemade herbal remedies that I make. Actually one I'm just making for the first time today and another, the other two I make every cold and flu season. Um, and I will link to all of the written recipes below for you. But the first thing we're gonna be making today is elderberry syrup, which you have probably heard about. It is becoming more popular as a kind of a more of a natural alternative to say your over-the-counter um, cough medicine or something like that. So elderberries are loaded with vitamins and antioxidants and are anti-inflammatory and have been proven to help fight cold and flu symptoms. Um, so they are gaining popularity, but they have been used for a very long time. I will say, um, just as a disclaimer, I am not a doctor or a certified herbalist or a aromatherapist. I'm just showing you what we do in our home and what works for us and I always recommend that you of course speak to your family doctor or natural health care practitioner before you start taking any type of new medication. Um, even natural medicine especially if you have any type of a chronic illness or condition um, or if you're on any other type of medication or prescriptions that uh, that it could interfere with. So I always just recommend talking to your doctor first. Um, but otherwise, our elderberry syrup, I like to keep some on hand this time of year, not just use when we get sick, but actually to take regularly to help boost our immunity, to help try to prevent illness in the first place. But it can be really expensive to buy it at the store, so I like to make my own. So I start off, I've got a cup of dried elderberries and I use um, the Star West Botanicals brand. So again, I will link to any of the items that I mentioned in this video below if you wanna check them out. Uh, but that's what I have always used and that's what we're using today. So I've got a cup of dried elderberries and I'm just gonna pour them into a little saucepan here. And then with elderberry syrup, there's there's lots of different recipes online. Um, I mean, you can just do straight elderberries. You can add in different types of um, herbs and spices to, with different types of medicinal properties. Um, but there are a few different recipes online. Today, what I'm gonna be doing, I really like to add in some cinnamon and cloves, ginger, and then I've also got a little bit of lemon peel today as well. So I'm gonna add in, sorry, I'm gonna add in about a teaspoon of whole cloves, thereabouts. Put those right in there. So medicinally speaking, cloves are also loaded with antioxidants and are also antibacterial. Um, and then also I like to use cinnamon sticks. So I put two whole cinnamon sticks right in with the dried elderberries and the cloves. Um, and again, I like this for the flavor that it imparts, but cinnamon sticks too are, um, contain antioxidants and are also anti-inflammatory. Um, and then aside from those, I like to also put in two tablespoons or thereabouts of chopped fresh ginger. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. 
And so ginger is antiviral, antimicrobial, and also anti-inflammatory. So lots of good medicinal properties. I also happen to have some organic lemon on hand. So I just grated a little bit of the peel and the peel of all citrus fruits, um, but with lemons, the peel is really where you're gonna find all of the essential oils. So all of the really potent medicinal properties are in the essential oils and that's in the peel. So I just went ahead and peeled it and I got about a teaspoon of um, fresh lemon, organic lemon peel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that in there too. And that's going to give me vitamin C and all of the good medicinal properties of lemon. And then I've got four cups of water here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my water over top. And then I'm just going to bring that to a boil. Um, and as soon as it comes to a boil, then I'm gonna turn it down to about medium heat and I'm going to simmer it until it reduces by half, so until the liquid reduces by half. So about, about 25 minutes to about half an hour is usually what I do that for. So while I've got this um, coming to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the next herbal remedy. So the next thing I'm making is actually something that is brand new to me. I am making rose hip syrup. So if you're not familiar with rose hips, these are some rose hips here. And what they are is they're kind of the fruit of the rose, right? So the rose, like roses like flowers. After the flower dies, they produce a little fruit in the middle that looks like a little red berry and that is the rose hip. Um, and rose roses and rose hips are actually super high in vitamin C. These I've actually just foraged from a local park. Um, there's lots of wild roses that grow around here and so once the roses die in the fall um, the rose hips are left and so you can go out and forage for them but you can also purchase them dried. So again I will link to um, where you can go purchase dried rose hips if you cannot collect them locally um, then you can order them as well. But these ones I've just collected and foraged locally um, so I just went ahead and pulled off the little brown flowers that kind of remained on the ends of them and then de-stemmed them and I of course made sure to give them a rinse when I first brought them home. They've been here for a couple days, so a few of them are a little bit shriveled up, but that's fine. You can use fresh or dried. Now, it doesn't matter how much you're starting with. Um, I will give you the ratio of water to rose hips that you're gonna be using, so you don't have to start with a certain amount, which is good because I just have whatever, however much I forage. But what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to put them in a food processor and blend them up. So that's what I'm gonna do in just a sec. But just before we begin, I just wanna let you know that this recipe that I'm about to show you, um, I've got this from Colleen over at Grow Forage Cook Ferment. So I will link to her post and her recipe, written recipe below for this uh, rose hip syrup as well. All right, so I've got my elderberries came to a boil. I've got that turned down now and I've got my timer set. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to prepare my rose hips. So I'm gonna pop them into my little food processor here. Um, or you can use a blender or whatever you have. Okay, let's give it a go. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, it doesn't need to be blended really fine, just kind of a rough chop, but by doing this, um, just like when you are chopping up your herbs or vegetables or anything like that, you are then increasing the surface space. So that allows for when we steep it in the water, like we're about to, that's gonna allow it to draw out more nutrients a lot easier than if you were to say, just put the rose hips in whole. Now, the only thing about rose hips that you do need to be aware of is inside there are tiny little hairs and um, you know, you probably can't see them from here, but I can actually see them all along the inside of the container here, these tiny, tiny little hairs. And if you ingest those, they can be really irritating. Um, so we don't, so we need to make sure that once we cook them down, that we are, that we strain them out really well. So I just wanna make a note of that because you wouldn't want to say, just take this and then put it uh, into steep it in some water and drink that as a tea right away without straining out those really fine hairs very well because they can be very irritating if you ingest them. So what I'm going to do though is I'm going to go ahead and pop them into my other saucepan right here. I'm actually going to measure them out first 
because according to Pauline's recipe, you should use about two parts of water for every one part rose hip. So I need to kind of see how much I have. So I've got about half a cup it looks like. So I've got about half a cup of my little chopped up rose hips. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those into my saucepan and then I'm gonna add in one cup of water. Okay, so I've got my cup of water. I'm gonna put that in and I'm going to do the exact same thing as I just did with the elderberries. I'm just gonna bring this up to a boil. And then as soon as it starts boiling, I'm gonna turn it down to about medium heat and simmer it for, she says about 15 to 20 minutes or until the liquid has reduced by half. So just like with the elderberries. But in the meantime, while that is all cooking, I'm gonna show you how to make one of my other favorite herbal remedies uh, that I make every year and that is fire cider. So just to show you close up, because you can probably see them a little bit better here, um, this is the inside of the lid where I just blended all of those rose hips and you can see all those tiny little hairs. They're very, very fine. So you do not, like I say, you do not want to ingest those because they can be very, very irritating to your esophagus and your digestive tract. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to make is fire cider. So fire cider is a traditional herbal remedy uh, that is made with apple cider vinegar, uh, which I have in here is just a growler that I got from a local brewery. I actually make my own apple cider vinegar. So you can use store-bought, um, just make sure that it's raw, unpasteurized um, apple cider vinegar with all of the good health benefits that come along with a raw apple cider vinegar. Um, otherwise, if you make your own, it's a, this is a great recipe to use it in. And then um, I'm gonna wanna put basically just a whole bunch of herbs and kind of spices and things like that into my fire cider. So the fire cider is called so because it is really hot. <laughs> when you take it, it's got like a, a kick to it because of some of the ingredients. So you may see recipes online that call for different things. Um, it's kind of customizable. A lot of the ingredients I'm about to show you um, you either kind of optional, but typically with most fire ciders, you're going to see a few standard ingredients. And the first one is horseradish. So fresh horseradish, um, which we just got some from our local grocery store and chopped it up. But you want to use fresh horseradish, not the jarred stuff from the store. Um, so you've got some horseradish, um, some jalapenos, onions and garlic are other kind of staple um, herbs, I guess, that we put in here and they have a ton of medicinal properties as well. And then as well, we've got some ginger. I like to do fresh chopped turmeric. Um, we've got some lemon. So I, these are the ones that I used. I grated them and I'm using the peel and the elderberry syrup. And I'm just gonna kind of squeeze the lemons and throw them in. And then I've got a handful of rosemary so there's lots of medicinal properties in all of these herbs and spices i won't go into them too deep because i do have a whole other video and blog post where i walk you through um, how to make your own fire cider at home so once again i'm going to link to all that stuff below if you guys want to learn about this stuff in more depth so i'm going to start off by just adding all these into a quart jar so for fire cider elderberry syrup like i said is kind of is synonymous with cold and flu season right it kind of helps to relieve cold and flu symptoms. And then the rose hip honey, similarly, right? It's got a lot of vitamin C. Both of those are really good immune boosters. Fire cider is similar, but it is especially good for respiratory illness because of all of the um, hot peppers, the hot horseradish, the kind of spiciness of the ginger, and then the allicin in the, um, in the onions and garlic, right? All of that helps to kind of expel any mucus you might have um, and really helps to clear up the respiratory uh, system, right? So if you're stuffed up or you're dealing with any type of respiratory illness, taking a little bit, a little shot of this fire cider will really help clear the sinuses right away. So just so you know, for my garlic, um, I say about eight to 10 cloves, but I had four big cloves. So I just did my four cloves, um, chopped up about one medium onion. I use three smaller onions from our garden. I do about a half a cup of ginger. So I'm gonna pour that in. Um, about half a cup of chopped fresh horseradish. Then 
and about you know just one or two jalapenos chopped and you do want to have those um, the seeds in there um, if you really don't like spicy or you want to tone it down a little bit you can you know I would just say just do one jalapeno or if you like that kind of extra spice then then go two this is already chopped up but that's roughly about two jalapenos with their seeds that I'm putting in there Turmeric. This was just a little knob of turmeric. It measured out to about a quarter of a cup chopped. So I'm going to add that in there. And then I had one whole lemon as well. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze that in and just toss the lemon pieces in. Now I like to make sure that I'm using organic lemon when I'm making any type of herbal medicine, cooking as well, but especially when it comes to herbal medicine because I don't want to be adding any you know pesticides or any other chemicals or anything gross when I'm trying to keep things all natural um, but I am just gonna basically stuff this jar so squeeze these in and I'm just gonna put the whole lemon in now I don't usually add lemon to my fire cider um, but it has actually been uh, recommended to me by a few readers who say that they add lemon to theirs so I'm I happen to have one this year so I'm gonna just put it in there we go and then my rosemary, which I like to just kind of bruise just to help it release the essential oils um, before I put it in. Now you can use other herbs as well. Thyme is a fantastic herb and I actually do <laughs> have a tiny little bit of thyme here, but um, it's we're heading into winter and I have harvested most of the thyme from the garden so there's not a lot left. So I'll just put a little bit in. But thyme is really good, got a lot of good medicinal properties as well. It's an expectorant too, which again helps if you've got any mucus or anything like that. Um, oregano is another good one that you can add in. We just happen to have a whole bunch of rosemary and that has all sorts of good medicinal benefits as well. So once again, I won't go into everything here, but I will link to all of my recipes, um, which go over a breakdown of all the medicinal properties of all of these ingredients in more detail below for you to check out. All you should do now is cover with uh, my apple cider vinegar. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop a lid on my fire cider and I'm just gonna set it aside to somewhere at room temperature, you know, out of direct sunlight and just let it infuse in the jar for about three to four weeks. So I am gonna give it kind of a good shake and just make sure that everything is kind of mixed up well in there and covered by that apple cider vinegar. Um, and then I usually like to give it a shake up um, once every few days, really whenever I remember it. And then once, um, once it is well infused, then I'm going to go ahead and strain all of the solids out. But I'm gonna reserve that infused vinegar and that is going to be my fire cider. And I just put that in a bottle. And then you can mix it with honey if you like to sweeten it. Um, or you can just keep it as is and then I like to either chase it with a spoon of honey So I'll usually take just a little shot of fire cider um, and chase it with a spoon of honey when I feel like I'm starting to get run down or come down with something or when I'm feeling stuffed up um, or have some type of respiratory illness uh, I would say if you're just starting out dilute it first in a glass of water and drink that or you can add it to uh, a little bit of bone broth just so that you're not taking it all in at once because it can burn a little bit. So that's my fire cider and I'm gonna put that to the side. Otherwise, I've got my elderberry syrup and my rosehip syrup is just about ready. I've only got a few minutes on the clock here. So I'm just gonna wait for the clock to run out and then I'm gonna go ahead and strain out the solids from both of these and then mix the liquid with some honey to make our syrups. Okay, so I've got a bowl set up here. What I've done is I've, got, I've taken a, a fine mesh sieve and then I've also got some cheesecloth and I have doubled it up and then doubled it up again. So it's there's four layers basically and I want to make sure that I have a lot of layers, especially for the rose hips because once again, you wanna be really careful about filtering out those little fine little hairs. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump in my rose hips with all of that liquid and let it drain. Okay, so I'm just gonna sort of push it down. Okay, and then from there, I'm gonna take this cheesecloth, 
it's still hot, so I'm gonna be careful. Normally I would say wait a little bit, let it drain through, and then when it cools down, you really wanna squeeze it through. But I need this sieve to do my elderberry syrup. And then you can see that is the liquid that I have remaining. Now, that looks pretty good. I don't see any little hairs in there. If you see any of those little hairs in there, then just strain it again and just keep straining it honestly until um, until it's clear, until you don't see any more of those little tiny hairs in there. But that is looking pretty good. Okay, so I've got probably about a third of a cup of liquid in there altogether. So I wanna add in about equal parts honey to liquid. So I'm gonna do about a third of a cup of honey as well and then mix it all together. So I actually purchased honey in these big, uh, how big are they? Three kilogram drums. That's as big as I can get them around here. Um, and I always buy raw unpasteurized honey because uh, honey has all sorts of great medicinal properties as well, but only if it's raw and unpasteurized. If it's been pasteurized, if it's been heated, then those all the good nutrients and ba good bacteria and all that stuff gets killed off. So you want to always make sure to use raw, unpasteurized, local honey if possible. Um, so I don't want to cook it, I'm just adding it in at the end. So I've got my rosehip uh, water, right, the infused water all ready to go, and then I'm going to add in about a third of a cup of raw, unpasteurized honey to make my syrup. All right, that's about at the two-third mark now. And then I'm just going to mix that all together. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this into a jar, or you can use a bottle as well, whatever you've got. And there you go, I've got my rose hip honey ready to go. Um, and I'm just gonna store this in the fridge. And according to the recipe, it says that this should actually store for up to six months in the fridge. So I've got my rose hip syrup. Um, I'm just gonna put that off to the side while I finish up making my elderberry syrup. Okay, so last, got my elderberry syrup, same as the rosehip syrup, exactly. I'm just gonna go ahead and gently, because as you can see, it's very dark, I don't want it to stain, gently pour that in. Um, with this cheesecloth, I've just got it doubled up. Um, I find that doubling it up is enough for the elderberries to keep any bits of anything out. No little hairs to worry about with these. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze the cheesecloth to get all of that liquid out. All right, so that's what I'm gonna get out of there. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna add in about one cup of my raw unpasteurized honey once again. I'm gonna measure out the cup. Okay, so that's about my cup of honey right there. I'm gonna go ahead and dump that in with the elderberry extract liquid. And then give that a real good stir. Mix that together really well. Okay, so that is pretty well mixed together, pretty well dissolved. Um, so I'm just gonna transfer it to a jar to store in the fridge. Now I'm actually just gonna go ahead and put it into the same jar um, where I have yesterday's batch in there. So this is where having a canning funnel um, can really help, or you can use a regular funnel too. Tiny little bit left over. That pretty much does it, fills up that jar. The lid on, and that's it. Just gonna give it another good shake. Um, and then I'm gonna just store that in the fridge. Um, my rose hip 
syrup I'm also going to store in the fridge. Like I say, both the elderberry syrup and the rosehip syrup should store in the fridge for up to about six months. The fire cider, really, I mean, that's going to store indefinitely. Um, you can store that even on pantry shelves. After you strain out all of the solids um, and reserve the liquid fire cider, then you can just store that on your pantry shelf. As long as it's out of direct sunlight, it should store, I mean, pretty much indefinitely. It's a vinegar, right? So that stores fine um, on pantry shelves. And then the elderberry syrup and the rose hip syrup, you want to make sure that you keep in the refrigerator. All right, so there you have it. I've got my elderberry syrup, I've got my fire cider brewing, and then I've also got my little rose hip syrup as well. So like I said, I will link to the written recipes for all three of these below, um, as well as any of the other links that I have mentioned throughout this video. And if you are interested in learning more about uh, natural medicine, natural living, homesteading, sustainability, self-sufficiency, all that good stuff, then you can visit me over at www.thehouseandhomestead.com. Thank you so much for joining me. Have yourself a happy and healthy winter season and I will see you back here again soon.